In this video tutorial, I am going to discuss about isomerism in amino acids. So, first let us look at the structure of amino acids. So, this is the central carbon. On one side, there is carboxylic acid group is attached. On another side, there is am amino group is attached. The third bond is with the hydrogen and fourth bond is with the side chain. This central carbon, it is known as alpha carbon. Now, if you compare the structure of amino acid with the fatty acid, you will find that there is C double H group which is bound with the long hydrocarbon chain, right. So, there are long, there is a long chain of hydrocarbon, okay. So, we generally give the carbon number from the C double H side in case of fatty acid. So, this is first carbon, second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon, so on and so forth, right. But to give them as a alpha beta, this C double H group that carbon is not given any uh, sign, okay. This second carbon it is known as alpha carbon, this third carbon is known as beta carbon, this fourth carbon is known as gamma carbon. So, if you take consider this much structure, it looks similar to this portion, right. This C double H carbon and then this carbon is attached. Here we call, call this carbon as alpha carbon. Similarly, in amino acid also, this carbon which is bound with the C double H group, we call it as a alpha carbon and uh, this amino group, it is bound with this alpha carbon, okay and this carbon which further binds with the acid. So, we call them as a alpha amino acids, alpha amino acids. So, this much is acid and this much is amino group which is bound with the alpha carbon of the acid. Now, this is the common structure of the amino acid. Now, if you consider just standard amino acid, then except for glycine, except glycine, all amino acid, all amino acids, their central carbon is bound with the four different groups, right? All amino acids, alpha carbon is bound with, bound with four different groups. Now, why glycine? they do not have this four different group because in case of glycine, this side chain R is equal to hydrogen. So, this hydrogen and this hydrogen will be similar. So, this central carbon, it is considered that it is bound with the three different groups, not the four. So, why, why this is important? Why four different group to the carbon is important? The reason is that whenever any carbon atom, it is bound with the four different group such carbon, it is known as asymmetric carbon, asymmetric carbon. And what is the importance of this asymmetric carbon? Importance is that because of the asymmetric carbon, that asymmetric carbon containing compound, it shows two types of isomerism. So, here in case of amino acid also, there is two type of isomerism is seen. One is the stereoisomers, stereoisomers and other is the optical isomers, optical isomers. Now, what is stereoisomer and what is optical isomer? Their basic fundamental, I had already made a video on that uh, and you can refer to that video in the playlist of chemistry of carbohydrates, okay. So, here we will not talk about the fundamental aspect of this stereoisomerism and optical isomerism. Basically, whenever we want to show a stereoisomerism, we use capital D and capital L, okay. Whereas, to show the optical isomers, we use small d and small l letter, okay. So, now this D and L isomerism, that is a stereoisomer. Now, what happens? This capital D and capital L amino acid, they are actually a three-dimensional representation. But when we write it on the paper, we need to show it by the two-dimensional representation. So, on the paper, on the two-dimensional diagram, you can see this D isomer by writing NH2 group on right side, NH2 group on right side. So, whenever on paper NH2 group is written on the right side, we consider that we are talking about D isomer. For this capital L, we draw NH2 group on left side, left side. So, here you can see 
that this is the common diagram that I had earlier drawn. So, here you can see NH2 group is on the left side. So, that means this is the common structure for the L alpha amino acid, right? So, if I had drawn this NH2 group on this side, then it would have been common structure for the D amino acid. Now, this L amino acid is the most common variety, most common variety and most abundant one in the nature. Almost all the amino acid in the plant and animal kingdom, almost all the proteins of plant and animal kingdom contain L type of I, uh, L type of amino acids. Whereas D amino acid, they are the rare variety. They are found in the cell wall of bacteria. Right. Now, regarding the second type of isomerism, that is the optical isomerism. And these optical isomers are also because of the asymmetric carbon. Now, what is optical isomer? Optical isomers can rotate the plane of polarized light. They rotate the plane of polarized light. If it is a clockwise rotation, then we call it as a small d uh, amino acid. And if they rotate anti-clockwise, we call it call them as a small L amino acid, right. Optical activity not only depends on asymmetric carbon, but, but it also depends on, depends on pH of the solution and side chain, side chain of the amino acid, okay. Now, as we have talked about the, about the asymmetric carbon, the question arises, what about all the standard amino acid? Does all standard amino acid contain only one asymmetric carbon? See, glycine, it has zero asymmetric carbon. Rest all standard amino acid, they have one asymmetric carbon. But there are two amino acids. One is isoleucine and second one is threonine. This two amino acid has their additional asymmetric carbon in their structure. So, they contain additional asymmetric carbon in their structure. So, this was all about isomerism in amino acids. I hope everything is clear to you. If you have any query or confusion, please write it down in the comment section below. Thank you.